Have you ever thought about making elementary particles from atmospheric showers or radioactive decays visible? With this video I want to provide you a manual how to build your own DIY particle detector in the form of a bubble chamber. Our bubble chamber will work as follows. A fleece on the top of a transparent plastic box has been saturated with isopropanol. The box is placed on a metal plate in black color with an excellent heat conductivity. Dry ice that consists in contrast to ordinary ice not of water but frozen carbon dioxide has been filled in a thick plastic shell underneath the metal plate. Dry ice has a temperature of approximately minus 78 degrees Celsius. Therefore it is very important that you protect yourself from the cold by wearing suitable protective gloves and goggles while working with dry ice. After waiting a little while the metal plate cools down to almost the temperature of the dry ice whereas the top of the box has still room temperature. The isopropanol gas sinks down and condensates on the cold surface of the metal plate. After waiting a few minutes a temperature gradient from the upper to a lower part of the box arises. Due to this gradient there is a thin layer of gaseous isopropanol close to the plate that is super saturated. This means the gas wants to condensate but is not able to do so because of a missing cloud condensation nucleus. This condensation nucleus could consist of a macroscopic object like a dust corn or a microscopic charged particle that travels through that layer. In the latter case the particle ionizes the gas molecules along its trajectory and creates a visible track with different shapes depending on the particle type. In order to build your own particle detector <coughs> you need to buy first a few things if you don't have them at home. First of all a transparent plastic box is required. In our case a simple plastic terrarium is used that can be bought for example in pet shops. Our metal plate consists of blackened aluminum with a thickness of approximately 5 mm. For an optimum result the metal plate should contain a groove with the shape of the walls of the plastic box in order to increase the gas tightness. The fleece can be bought from any ordinary DIY market and has to be cut according to the shape of the box. In order to fix the fleece on the top side 8 magnets are used, 4 for inside and 4 for outside. Then of course the most important part is required which is basically the dry ice. There are several sources for dry ice available. The local gas company might have some in spare. Sometimes supermarkets have dry ice after being supplied with frozen food. The required amount for this bubble chamber is approximately 1 kg in order to be able to repeat the experiment if something goes wrong. Then the plastic shell is required which consists in our case just of typical styrofoam. The main purpose of this shell is to store the dry ice and keep the environment protected from the cold of the dry ice. For a sufficient illumination a flashlight is additionally necessary because the total room has to be completely dark in order to obtain good results. After preparing all parts we can start building the bubble chamber. First of all the fleece has to be saturated with isopropanol. It should be enough to cover the whole area but not so much that additional propanol trickles out in the corners. The fleece has to be placed into the plastic box and mounted with two magnets for each corner which prevent the fleece from falling down. In the next step the dry ice has to be filled into the styrofoam shell. If it consists of small pellets of around 3 mm size then this is already fully sufficient. But if it has been delivered in one block it has to be crushed before. This can be done by inserting it into a big plastic bag and hammer to smash it into small grain. After filling it into the shell the metal plate has to be placed on top of it and finally the box with the isopropanol fleece is going to be inserted into the groove of the plate. Now you have to wait a couple of minutes until the different phases in the bubble chamber reach a condition of equilibrium. After that you can use the flashlight to enlighten the inner part of the box and hopefully see some nice tracks as shown in this video. I will make an additional video about particle physics in the near future and also about radioactive decays. For the time being we can keep in mind long and thick tracks are usually created by alpha particles that consist of double positively charged helium nuclei with two protons and two neutrons. Therefore the energy loss per track length is very high. 
Long and thin tracks are usually created by atmospheric muons or electrons from the beta decay. With this information I want to end my video and hope that it will be possible for you to build your own bubble chamber and try to do particle physics as physicists have done in the 20th century. Many new particles have been found with the help of bubble chambers, for example the omega minus baryon that consists of three strange quarks and is therefore negatively charged. Please stay tuned for my next videos.